Hey there, welcome to Module 6. In this course, we will cover routing and schedule management. Let's jump in. In this module, we will create and manage schedules, schedule groups and emergency groups, create and manage call and message routing, and create and manage prompts, as well as disconnecting interactions that may have become stuck. If you are keeping track, this module will cover the routing section as well as introduce you to prompts within the architect section. Let's get started. A schedule stipulates when a flow runs based upon the date, time, or event. You can define schedules to handle recurring events, holidays, or your regular business hours or after-hours support. Architect uses schedules to determine how to manage inbound and outbound interaction routing. To manage schedules for the organization, click Admin. Under Routing, click Scheduling. On the Schedules page, you can view the list of currently active schedules and the recurrence type. Click Add Schedule. In the name box, type a unique name to represent the schedule. This name appears in your list of entries on the Schedules tab. In the Division list, select the division to which this schedule belongs. To select how frequently you want the schedule to run, do one of the following. If the schedule is a one-time occurrence, leave the default repeating event setting unchanged. If the schedule is recurring, enable the repeating event setting. The subsequent configuration options change, depending on your selection. If the schedule is a one-time occurrence and the default repeating event setting is inactive, perform the following steps. Click in the first calendar box and select the date in which to start the schedule. To set up the schedule duration, do one of the following to run the schedule for a specific duration. Click in the start and end time boxes and select the duration. To run the schedule continuously for the entire duration of the selected date or dates, click all day. Click in the last calendar box and select the date in which to stop the schedule. Optionally, click iCal rule to add or modify a calendar rule manually. If the schedule is a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly occurrence, and the repeating event setting is active, next repeats every, select the frequency in which you want the schedule to run. To run the daily schedule within a specific time range, leave the default all-day setting disabled and set the start and end time. Enable the all-day setting if the schedule is for all day. Next to start, specify when to begin the recurring schedule. To run the schedule on a certain date, Select the on date setting and then click the calendar to choose the specific start date. To run the schedule the next time it meets the specified calendar rule, select next time the criteria is met. Next to end, choose when to end the schedule. To run the schedule indefinitely, select the no end date setting. To end the schedule after a specific number of days, select after and then enter the number of occurrences. To end the schedule after a specific date, select on date and then click the calendar to select the ending date. Click Save. Let's move on and create a schedule group. Defining and managing schedules can be cumbersome. To help with this process, use schedules with schedule groups to allow more flexibility in how your organization manages routing hours. Schedules are the blocks of time for which a call route is selected. Schedule groups allow you to combine multiple schedules and associate them to a singular routing definition. You can assign the schedules into a designated time zone and group them by type. Types are limited to open hours, closed hours, or holiday. To manage schedules for the organization, click Admin. Under Routing, click Scheduling. Next, click the Schedule Groups tab. Here you can view the list of currently active schedule groups and the schedules to which they belong. Click Add Schedule Group. In the name box, type a unique name to represent the schedule group. This name appears in your list of entries on the Schedules Group tab. In the Division list, Select the division to which this schedule group belongs. A schedule group must belong to a division. The default is the home division. Association with a division restricts which administrators are able to manage the schedule group. From the time zone list, choose the time zone to which the group schedules apply. If the selected time zone uses daylight saving time, this is factored into the time the schedule starts. In the Schedules tab, categorize the schedules as open, closed, and holiday. We created a test open schedule in the previous hands on exercise. As you can see, I populated the open schedule with the schedule we created. In the schedules area, next to closed, click the plus symbol. Begin typing a few letters of the schedule. Select if from the list and click add. After you have added all of the schedules you need to, click save. The schedule group page will open up with the new schedule group you're created. Next, we are going to wrap up schedule creation by walking through creating an emergency group. 
create an emergency group and associate it with a call route to quickly and efficiently turn on routing functionality that modifies call routing behavior during unplanned or semi-planned critical events, such as fire, natural disasters, and power outages. Use the Activate and Deactivate feature to test functionality prior to an actual emergency. Under Routing, click Emergency Groups. Here you can view the list of current emergency groups. Click the Add button. In the name box, type a unique name to represent the emergency group. This name appears in your list of entries on the Emergencies page. Select which division you want this emergency group to live in. Click Save or Create and add new if you have more groups to create. After clicking Save, you will be returned to the Emergency Group panel with the emergency group you created highlighted. Notice on the right side that you have a new field called Usages displayed. This will tell you what call routes and call flows the emergency group is referenced in, both of which we will cover in this module. Up next is creating a call route. On the Call Routing tab, you can view a list of active call flows and the telephone number or numbers tied to them. When a user dials a specific telephone number or dialed address, they are routed into the inbound call flow associated with that telephone number. Click the Add button to open the call routing page, map a call flow to a dialed address, and choose regular and emergency routing schedules. Select the checkboxes next to the call route entries that you want to remove and click the Delete icon. Genesis Cloud asks you to confirm your decision before deletion. In the search bar, begin typing the first few letters of the call route that you want to find. Choose the field to filter. The name column has links in this column to represent each call routing entry. Click a link to open the entry and make changes. The open column indicates if the call route is always open or is based on a schedule group. Schedule group has the name of the schedule group used. For the open or closed call flow columns, the call flow to which you want to route calls is displayed. The inbound numbers column displays the telephone numbers that a user dials to enter the designated call flow. To create a call route, click the Add button. In the Name field, type a unique call routing name. This name appears in your list of entries on the Call Routing page. In the Division field, enter the division of the call route. This name appears in your list of entries on the Call Routing page. From the Inbound Numbers drop-down list and select the required inbound numbers. Repeat typing the required numbers until complete. To use time-based routing, do the following. Under When is this call route open, click the Based on a Schedule Group radio button. Click the Select a Schedule Group and select it from the list. Under the What call flows should be used, click the Open list. Type the first few letters of the published call flow to associate to the configuration's open hours and select it from the list. Do the same method for the closed scenario. Choose the method of holiday routing. Use Close Call Flow, Route to a Call Flow, or Bypass Holiday Routing. To always route to a single call flow, ensure that the Always Radio button is clicked. Under the What Call Flow should be used, click the Route to List, and select an Open Call Flow. To select a flow to route calls in emergency situations, select this Call Route Closes in Emergency Cases checkbox. Set the What Emergency Group should close this Call Route section. Set the Emergency Group in the Select an Emergency Group field. Then, set the Emergency Call Flow in the Select an Emergency Call Flow field. Click Save. As you can see, Call Routing ties the Schedule Group and Call Flow together. Next up, Message Routing. On the Message Routing tab, you can view a list of active inbound message flows and the provisioned inbound numbers or addresses tied to them. When a user messages a specific inbound number, Genesis Cloud routes the ACD message into the associated inbound message flow. To manage message routing for the organization, click Admin. Under Routing, click Message Routing. As you can see, there are two columns. Inbound Message Flows, which represent the inbound message flows associated with a particular number or address. Inbound Address Column, which includes the provision numbers or addresses used to enter the designated inbound message flow. Click on the plus. Click Select Flow. Begin typing the first few letters of the inbound message flow you want to use and select it from the list. To add inbound numbers or addresses to associate with the configuration, click the plus sign. Click Select Addresses, then click the number you want to add. Click Add, then click Save. Let's move on and cover the final topic of the routing section, Disconnect Interactions. This Disconnect Interactions tool allows you to disconnect an interaction that you determine is stuck or, 
for whatever reason, does not disconnect and clear from the queue. Some behaviors that cause an interaction to remain active include an interaction that appears as active in real-time views, but was completed by the agent, an interaction that is not visible and therefore unavailable to an agent, interactions placed on hold when using WebRTC with a persistent connection. Under Routing, click Disconnect Interactions. The tool panel is displayed. Something to note. Before you disconnect an interaction, consider the following things. To disconnect an interaction, you must add the interaction ID. Use caution when disconnecting active interactions. Disconnecting an active interaction immediately terminates it. This tool may not disconnect some interactions. If the issue persists, contact Genesis Cloud Customer Care. Enter the interaction ID. Click Disconnect Interaction. In the Confirm Disconnect dialog box, click Disconnect. So far in this module, we have talked about schedules and call routing and how they work together. For this part of the module, we are going to review how to create and manage prompts. Although this is an architect, prompt management is typically controlled by the Genesis Cloud Administrator. Under Architect, click Architect. It will open a separate browser window. Click on the Prompts tab. Architect contains two types of prompts, user prompts and system prompts. User prompts are company-specific prompts created by Architect users. If you have the appropriate role, you can create, modify, and delete user prompts. System prompts are Architect-provided, generic prompts to indicate numbers, dates, days of the week, months, and so on. You cannot delete system prompts, nor can you rename a system prompt name, change the description, or modify the text on a system prompt resource. Within the user prompts, click Add. The Create Prompt dialog box opens. Enter the prompt name and optionally, a description of the prompt. Click Create Prompt. Be sure to stick with solid prompt naming conventions. A prompt cannot contain spaces or special characters, cannot begin with a number or include a name already in use. After the prompt is created, it will show on the prompts page. Click the name of the prompt you just created. The Edit Prompt box appears. Use TTS or text-to-speech to type words or phrases that architect will convert to speech and read back to the caller. If you click the Add Audio link, a box will display, allowing you to upload a WAV audio file to use as the prompt. If you have a microphone installed on your computer or device, you can record a prompt from your browser. As you can see, proper prompt management can go a long way in keeping the organization organized. To recap, this module we walked through creating a scheduled schedule group and emergency group. We also created a call route and message route. These are what tie the call flows to the inbound phone numbers. We introduced you to prompts with an architect and also walked through disconnecting a stuck interaction. As our previous modules, all step-by-step -step guides are attached to this module and can be downloaded through the paid course. Thank you for completing Module 6. In Module 7, we will discuss routing and schedule management. See you there.